In this video, we will look at a couple of examples to practice thinking about conjectures and counterexamples. In example A, it says, here's an algebraic equation and a table of values for n with the result for t. Notice we start out with this equation, t equals n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3. And what we have here is really just a table that's divided up into three parts. We have our values for n, and then sort of our calculations in the middle, and then our answer for t. And after looking at the table, Pablo makes this conjecture. The value of n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3, in other words, the answer for t, is 0 for any whole number value of n. So he's basically saying, no matter what number I plug in over on the left for n, my answer is always going to end up being zero because that's what happened the first three times, so maybe it will always happen. The question we have is, is this a valid or true conjecture? So if it's true, it means that it would be true for any number that you plug in for n. So you can plug in 100 and the answer should still be zero for t. So let's just test it out. Let's just try 100. Say n equals 100. We're trying to see if t will actually equal 0. So let's plug it in. We would have 100 minus 1 times 100 minus 2 times 100 minus 3. 100 minus 1 is 99. Then we've got times 98 and times 97. Now, I know that the answer to that is not 0. Because to have an answer of 0, you have to have multiplied somewhere along the line by 0. So this number does not equal 0. It's just going to be a big number, definitely not equal to 0. So that means actually his conjecture is not valid. It's not true. And what I just did over here, n equals 100, that's a counterexample because it's a specific example that shows his conjecture is wrong. I can plug in, for example, 100 into that expression for t, and my answer is not 0. Therefore, he's wrong. So a, a counterexample is just one example to prove someone wrong. That counter prefix means like going against the claim. All right, let's look at example b. Arthur is making figures for a graphic art project. He drew polygons and some of their diagonals. And here we have four examples. Based on these examples, Arthur made this conjecture. If a convex polygon has n sides, then there are n minus 2 triangles drawn from any given vertex of the polygon. So let's just think about what that means. He's saying if the shape has n sides, so for example, this would be n equals 3, 3 sides, 4 sides, 5 sides, 6 sides. He's saying there are always n minus 2 triangles. So, for example, if n is 5, 5 minus 2 is 3. He's saying in this ex example, there are 3 triangles. 1, 2, 3. In the next one, there are 4 triangles. 1, 2, 3, 4, which is 6 minus 2. So, the question is, is Arthur's conjecture correct? Can you find a counterexample to his conjecture? Well, his conjecture certainly appears to be correct based on the four examples that he has done. And we could do more examples, and it will actually turn out that any example you try, it will be true. But you still haven't proven it if you've just looked at examples, because it's still possible that there's another example out there that you haven't thought of that would be a counterexample to this conjecture. So what we should say is his conjecture appears to be true. But it still needs to be proven because just looking at examples isn't enough to really prove for sure that it would always be true.